So I've seen a couple Achilles ruptures on the interwebs recently, and it always happens when I see someone bounding, coming back on a single leg, and then sprinting off, right? Which leads me to ask the question, could we have changed any aspect of that? Is that just a thing that happens? Well, you know, human beings have gotten really strong, really powerful, and we have all this weird shoe technology, and uh, we also do engage in different food eating and different have different environmental stressors than we maybe used to. But let's start with the fundamental idea that, man, if you rupture your Achilles, which is the strongest, thickest tendon in your body, things are going on, right? Were there signs beforehand? Now, accidents happen, right? And I want to point out that rarely is there ever a single issue. So if we're talking about Achilles rupture, what are the factors? Well, let's go off the top of my head. Because right now, we're experiencing change delta in training volume. And definitely the number one way to you know, potentially expose yourself to increased risk of injury is to change your, see a radical change in your training volume. So you know, I haven't been sprinting. Boom, I'm going to sprint a ton. Well, I sprinted th two months ago or three months ago. And suddenly, what we're seeing is in COVID, you know, maybe you weren't doing something, then you're playing a lot. So we're going to really be interested to see, and I think some of the preliminary data about some of the injuries we've seen in professional sports come simply from this change in volume. All of a sudden, the speeds and loads and collisions and, and forces, we're seeing a little bit of this. But that's not the only thing, right? Because I want to keep in mind that we're never going to point the finger at a single object or a single idea. But how about this? How about genetics? Well, it turns out some of us don't code for collagen very well. And there are some good genetic tests that can show you predisposition. So two athletes, different, different alleles, different expressions. See that? How about food choices? Do you eat like you are, a, I don't know, tantrum-y, spoiled 14-year-old who just eats pizza and is highly inflamed, that can make a difference, right, in terms of tissue quality. How about make sure you have enough protein on board, collagens on board. We certainly appreciate that not all diets are the same, or certainly not all diets are the same for all, all the same people, right? So making sure that we're hydrated, we'll put hydration here, right? What about previous injury? How about previous pathology? Right? Did you injure that ankle before? Did you have full range of motion in that ankle? Well, all of a sudden you're seeing that, man, there is a whole lot that goes into this. And I can probably think, oh, how about this one? Antibiotics. Are you on a class of antibiotics that lead you uh, more susceptible? Like, um, like uh, I'm blanking off the top of my head, one of them, chloroquines, those, those. Um, Anyway, the bottom line is that there's a whole bunch of things that go into tissues not being protective. Like, are your athletes on tamoxifen? Tamoxifen, which is a um, breast cancer drug, right? All of a sudden, you're not, you're not uh, protected. Are there PEDs involved with this thing? PED, performance enhancing drugs. So my point is, there are a whole lot of issues here about that could potentially go into this. But what I want to remind ourselves is that when we start thinking in these terms, we're like, I can't control this all. But what can you control? Exposure is the name, exposure is the name of the game. And what I'm really talking about is, are you spending time in the positions in which you're going to be exposed, right? So if you, aren't, if you know you're going to have your hip behind you and you're going to be explosion, explosive in this position, at some point it behooves you to make sure that you are loading this position. And what we see, especially around the rupture of the Achilles here, is that this position, except in sprinting, is rarely challenged effectively in the gym. We're starting to see a lot more split stance. We're starting to see people like Secret, Athle Secret of Athleticism uh, doing a lot of work in sort of end range isometrics here. But remember, I need to be able to generate force, absorb force, and stop force, right? Those concentric, isometric, eccentric ideas, or eccentric, conce isometric, concentric ideas, means that if I'm not exposing my athletes to these positions, in this specific shape and these conditions, chances are 
I may be generating or having an athlete end up with a huge, huge engine, but without the connective tissue to match. And I suspect that some of the original bodybuilding or, or con tissue conditioning that we would see built in is just tendon health. It's just ligament health, just connective tissue health. So if you're just chasing big reps and you're not getting good blood flow, if you're not getting, you know, uh, these tissues pumped, if you're not loading them and exposing them to that long-term sort of idea, then don't be, don't be surprised when all of these things aggregate up and sneak in the back door and take an Achilles. So if there's something we can do, then we want to try to do it, right? Adaptation error. Put this on here. I mean, if you are smashing yourself and not decongesting, you might have, uh, might have less effective position. So what we can control? Exposure, making sure that if you are engaged in sports, right, you're training for these things, forget menopause, forget head trauma. <laughs> Again, the list of things that go on here are immense. Make sure that at the very least you can control the exposure that your athletes have to specific positions while you try to manage these things. This is how we're gonna get ahead at mitigating uh, injury risk factor, not eliminating it.